Hey everybody, Invisible Katana here. Um, celebrating video games day today. This is actually the second video I'm doing uh, celebrating that. The first one was games that actually shaped me. So if you guys want to check that out, I will put a link in the description, or I'll probably just put, uh, I'll probably do both actually. Put the little uh, ending video square, whatever the heck those things are called. I can't even remember honestly because they're not annotations in screens. That I think that's what they call them. Um, I'll put one of those uh, at the end of this video if you guys want to check that out afterwards. But that I thought was a good way to kind of start things off. Just say like, you know, that's kind of, you know, those certain games that I mentioned are why I am the way that I am or, you know, how they may have affected me in certain ways growing up. And this I thought was a really good topic because I think it's a big part of the gaming world where we always have something that we see where it's like, man, I would love to get that game or... You know, man, I, I miss that game and stuff like that. And this definitely comes from the side of, you know, nostalgia in the sense of never having actually had a full experience with it rather than, oh, I used to have that game, but something happened to it and I lost it or broke it. This is more, I wish I had that nostalgia, but I just don't. And for me, I wanted to start, it would kind of be just from oldest to newest, and I'll you know, kind of jump around a bit. But for me, I wanted to start with uh, Legend of Zelda. Just never played them. Never played. I Technically, I shouldn't say I never played I've played the first one because technically I owned the original game with the golden cartridge. My uncle gave me his um, when my grandmother was selling their house and he doesn't really play games like that anymore. So he gave me all his Nintendo games, he gave me his Atari, and I was like, sweet, I actually have the very first Legend of Zelda, got the gold cartridge and everything. I turned it on, I had to have played it maybe twice, like, you know, I loaded it up, you know, his thing was there and I was like, alright, I'm obviously not going to use his save file, I'm going to start a brand new game. And I played it for like the tiniest little bit, and that was it. And then I like never went back to it because, I don't know, I guess, you know, at the time it was like PS3 era, and I was, you know, playing whatever modern games were there. At that point, I had been doing my YouTube channel and doing that, so like whenever I, typically when I had free time, it's normally, even like, like it is right now, typically when I have free time, I devoted to something, you know, on the YouTube channel. So back then it was like, cool, I can try it out because it's always been one of those things where um, it, there are like a few examples where I haven't done this, but most of the time I kind of have weird OCD about video games where I'm like, if I'm going to play this game, I have to play the original game first, even though technically, you know, you got like all the timelines and stuff, so none of that really matters that much because none of the stories really connect that much to where it's specifically like, this happened right after this. They always have references to it, but obviously the games are always you know, meant to be their own thing. They just have these connections and stuff like that. So, it was always like, man, I haven't played, you know, the original Legend of Zelda, which I'm sure a ton of people haven't who love Legend of Zelda, and that's totally fine. But for me, I'm weird and stupid and have OCD about it. So, I was like, I can't play any of the Legend of Zelda games until I play the first one, and beat it was initially the concept behind that. And I still never did. Never ended up beating it. I played it, like, a little bit, and that was it. And I remember when... I first really wanted to even play Legend of Zelda was during the GameCube era because um, I never really cared much for, uh, well actually I guess it was during the Wii era because it was like when the Wii first came out, but I never really cared much for the Legend of Zelda simply because it was never like that big of a deal. Um, I never owned an N64. Um, the people that I knew that did own an N64, which is literally like one set of cousins. I had like one group of cousins, uh, different cousins if you've seen my other video. I just call everyone my cousins. Um, but I had some cousins who had an N64, but they never had the Legend of Zelda games. They had Super Mario 64, so I, I played, you know, I played through that game, and they, I had another set of cousins that had, like, you know, Donkey Kong 64, but I never had anyone in my family that had the Legend of Zelda game, so it was never even there, you know, at least during that time, where it was like, oh, I'm missing this, and of course, eventually, you know, just like today, as the years go on and games become more and more, you know, a part of just the landscape of the world and pop culture, commercials are far more prevalent, you know, compared to, what, you know, back then. Like, I remember seeing commercials during the Wii era and, you know, sort of the end of GameCube era when Twilight Princess was coming out. And that was the first time I saw Legend of Zelda and I was like, that looks really cool. Like, I'd never thought that before because... It was always just like, yeah, Majora's Mask, and it was just like, it would just be clips of those games from the N64, and it's like, everyone likes them, but it's nothing about their, you know, really, like, blew my mind or anything like that. It was just like, okay, that's The Legend of Zelda, and it's very popular, and it's like Mario, and it's just super famous, and it's just like, meh, to me. But I remember when Twilight Princess first came out, and it was like this older version of Link, and it was, it seemed like it was going to be darker and a bit grittier and, you know, more mature than the other Legend of Zelda games. 
it stuck out to me, and I was like, I would love to get that game, and that's when it, things really kicked in, like, but I can't because of the other uh, games. Of course, at the time, I did not know that there was the whole different timelines thing. I didn't know that at the time. It was just like, this is The Legend of Zelda, so it was like, if you start here, at that time, it was like, if you started the fourth game, you're missing a bunch of stuff. So I didn't know that, you know, back during that time, when, like, that idea first popped into my head that the games are like, just wildly all over the place and there's really no succinct story um, outside of, like, these crazy timelines and how, you know, separated they are by typically, like, hundreds of years for every game, even though it's always Link. So, in that regard, I did not know that, and that probably would have swayed my opinion on how much I really wanted to get Twilight Princess, but, like I said at the time, that was, that was really what showed me, like, man, that looks cool. I don't remember ever seeing a commercial for, you know, Ocarina of Time, or Majora's Mask, because I was so young, and video game commercials just didn't show up nearly as much as they do today. There aren't you know, it's not like Uncharted's coming out, or Gears of War is coming out, or here's like, you know, just a, literally a commercial for a console, and they show like 20 games just in quick clips and stuff like that, which typically you still don't see that on TV, that's mostly like on YouTube where they do those, but that stuff just didn't happen at the time, so it was just very interesting, like, finally almost, I guess, catching up to be like, wow, Legend of Zelda looks pretty sweet. And then I still never played them. <laughs> like, I never played them. My friend even let me borrow, um, he has, like, the promotional thing that came out for the GameCube uh, before uh, Wind Waker even came out, where it has the first four uh, games, where it's the original two, Majora's Mask, as well as um, Ocarina of Time. And they're all on one single GameCube disc, and he let me borrow it, and I still never played it. It was like, this is the perfect opportunity. It's modern, it's on GameCube, it wasn't super modern because that was still during, like, by, the, by that point, I, you know, it was, it was still PS3 and everything, but it was like, this is it, like, that was kind of my moment to finally sit down and play those games, and I still never did, like, it, and we recently talked about it the other day because um, my girlfriend and I were looking through, like, old boxes uh, from the apartment, and I pulled out, like, I was like, oh, man, we, we put, like, all the Wii stuff away. And it's, it's been, like, Wii U and PS4 and stuff. And so I was like, oh, man, there's all our, all the Wii games and some of the GameCube games that we had. And so I took out the Legend of Zelda stuff. I was like, I totally forgot I brought this from my buddy. And so when he came over the other day, he was like, have you beat this? I was like, nope, didn't even touch it. And he just laughed. And it was just like, yeah, I just had all this time. And I never sat down to play Legend of Zelda. And I love Link. I use the crap out of Link and Smash Brothers, but... It's that weird thing where it's like, I love you for this, but I just, that's all I got. It's like my one connection to him is like Toon Link and, you know, I guess Teenage Link from Melee, Brawl, and now uh, the Wii U version. And that's really it. It's like, I've never played those games. They've always just been, they're right there. They're literally, I could go into the front and I could start playing the first one right now, but I know I'm not going to do that. But it's just right there. It's, it's so close. And I just always let it slip by. So Legend of Zelda is like that, fran the whole franchise is like, I want to start from the beginning but I just never take the chance to do it. I just don't. So that's like the, I would personally say the biggest franchise, uh, to me at least, that I just let kind of slip through my fingers is definitely the Legend of Zelda franchise. Even though I have the most amazing opportunity to just do it and I can, I still don't. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is actually Silent Hill. Never really got into it. I played the first one and that's it. My uncle had the first game. Um, he always had some game that I didn't have at the time because all the games were mature games, so he's the reason I first played Metal Gear Solid, which I love. Um, he's the reason I played Final Fantasy VII, which I loved, and he's the reason that I played this game. I actually own it now because he gave me his Dreamcast game, but he has this game for um, Berserk, the anime. They have a game on Dreamcast. Actually, if you watch Game Grumps, they actually did a Let's Play of it. That game is super crazy, but when I was younger, it was just like, holy crap, this is like you chopping people up and stuff, and then I played it um, a few years ago. I was like, man, Dreamcast, huh? Uh, some games just don't age well perfectly, like, some mechanics, but, it was, you know, that was just one of those things with Silent Hill, and I played the first one, it's, it was, you know, it's right there, Silent Hill and Resident Evil are the ones where it's like, they both came out, it's like, these are the games to get for horror, and I had Resident Evil, Resident Evil was actually my favorite franchise, and Silent Hill was just like, right there, but I never got it, played it, uh, this was so far back, I used to skip cutscenes, like, I always say that, whenever I think about, like, old games, I played Silent Hill back when I used to skip cutscenes, so that's what it was like when I used to play games, or when I like first played Silent Hill. So I started the game off, it's, like I still remember too, because it was a normal, it was like probably like one of the worst 
times I've ever done this where I skipped a cutscene because I went through and I remember the beginning of the game is kind of normal. You start off in Silent Hill and you're going through, you get to this diner and that's where some other characters are. And I was like, blah, blah, blah. I skipped the cutscene and it goes from day to night. And I was like, I think I missed some important stuff in that cutscene because it literally, like the whole game changed after that. And I was like, I probably should have watched that cutscene. That's like the one time I ever remember thinking, I probably should have paid attention there and not have skipped that because it went from day to night and everything was dark and foggy and you like that's when all the monsters started to come out and I was like I think I missed some important stuff because I don't know where I'm going I don't know what the objective is this you know PlayStation era so it was just like you get what you're supposed to do typically from the cutscenes back then and there was no like check the objective some games had that typically if they're like um, some of the more adventure platformer games but Horror games were not like that. It was just like, you go through the story, and then you find out what to do next. And I was just lost, and that was the last time I played Silent Hill. I went, you know, from the diner around, like, this corner through an alley. There's this crazy thing um, stuck to, like, the gate. It couldn't attack me, but it was just, like, this mushy-looking monster, um, like, stuck in the gate screaming. And I was like, that's creepy. And I had no weapons. I didn't know what to do. I think I ended up being chased by something, and I probably died. And I was like, I just don't know what to do. And then I think I stopped playing the game. And that was it, you know, and that's Silent Hill. And there's been a million Silent Hill games, and I've just never played them. I know there was the HD collection, which um, I'm pretty sure was just the first three games. And I never ended up getting that. I remember thinking about it, like, I do kind of want to get that, because I've always wanted to play, you know, this classic horror franchise. And the only thing I remember is that, like, there was something in the first game that they changed for the HD collection. They put, like, a weird TV screen over something that was really odd. But, yeah, I just never ended up buying it, and it was, once again... One of those franchises that just slipped through my fingers that I always think about where it's like, I'm sure I love that. I love horror games. I love to get scared. But I just never ended up playing Silent Hill. Same with uh, the Fatal Frame games. Like, really, the most famous horror games outside of Resident Evil, I just, I haven't played. And it's really sad because I'm like, I know I'd love that. Fatal Frame I never played. Silent Hill, you know, I got that tiny little first taste of it. And it's just like, what is wrong with me? Like, I just miss out on these games where I'm always thinking, like, I know I'd love that, but I never buy them. Especially now because... I would have to go backwards and I'd probably, depending on uh, which games I get, I'd probably have to like pay to have somebody fix my PS2 if that were the case. Uh, for Silent Hill, of course, I can just buy uh, the HD collection and then I think the other games are actually PS3 games. Um, but yeah, for Fatal Frame, I don't think they did that. If they ever did that and they like completely redid Fatal Frame, uh, I know they did the thing for the Wii U, which was like kind of a remake, I believe, of the first game. And that was a whole weird thing because that was episodic and stuff and I still don't really know how that ultimately came out. I don't know if they ever made like a full, just regular release of that game. I guess I should look into that. Um, but yeah, if they ever do it for like a more modern version, I think I'll finally get into those games. But those are some that I missed. Um, one that really bugs me because it actually is my second favorite franchise is Metal Gear because uh, and this, def this plays 100% into the sort of OCD thing that I have where it's like I have to play the games in order for the story and it actually makes more far more relevant sense uh, for Metal Gear or, or maybe it doesn't because it depends on which I guess it depends on which games you're playing but for me I still need to play Peace Walker so I bought the HD collection so I have I finally have two again because some a-hole stole like a bunch of my PS2 games sadly so I have uh, PS they're not PS2 but MGS2 again uh, MGS3 I still have that's one of the few games that wasn't stolen so I have that uh, in HD now, and then I have Peace Walker, which was like, that was on PSP, so I never got to play that game. I played a little bit of the Metal Gear Acid games, because one of my cousins had that on PSP, and I never owned a PSP, so I played that a little bit and liked it, but it was like, all right, Peace Walker is officially on consoles, that's great, I can play through that, and then I'll play through that, then I can go to Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes, and then I can go to Metal Gear Solid Five. I have still not played Peace Walker. I'm pretty sure I never even installed that. I am I know I took it out of the plastic. I got like a couple games, which is super depressing. I still have games in plastic that I've owned for like three years at this point, which is insane. Like I just never thought I would ever get to that point, but things have changed, especially with the YouTube channel. Um, I tend to save a lot of my gaming for my channel outside of, rather than playing myself. But yeah, it was, I'm just stuck. It's like, I need to go back to my PS3, which, might not be too crazy because I actually recently just started doing Let's Plays on my PS3. Uh, there's like a couple of games that I've always wanted to play. Um, Ninja Gaiden. That's actually a great thing to bring up. I already have that plan. I was like, I'm going to play the Ninja Gaiden games. All of them. Um, so I bought Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1, 2, and 
uh, well, 3 isn't called Sigma, but Razor's Edge, or like the better version of <laughs> Ninja Gaiden 3. So I got the first two on PS3 off of eBay, and then um, 3 I actually bought the Wii U version. So I'm going to get through those games. I'm like, I am going to finally play, officially, the Ninja Gaiden games. I have played the first one up to like the first boss, I think. I don't even remember where I played that or who owned it or what. But I think it was like when it was Ninja Gaiden Black. I had played like the very first, through like the first level up to the first boss, and then that was it. So I have experienced that game. I've played the demo for uh, the Razor's Edge version of 3, and I certainly experienced how hard those games truly are. That demo was so difficult, it was insane. Like, it was messing up my arm, like, just trying to survive that junk. I was like, my wrist was starting to hurt. But all three of those games are games that have always slipped through. I love ninjas. I love the crazy action. And, you know, even though they kind of took out the gore for Sigma 2, they replaced, like, all the blood and stuff. I don't know why, but I'm more entertained by the action. I don't care about the blood and gore. I just want some crazy ninja action. So it's like, finally, I have all three of those games. I'm getting closer to doing them because I was like, I'm going to do these ga certain games in order. Um, another great game that always slipped through my fingers, like, probably, like, one of the, is like the, I don't know, one of the first 10 PS3 games I think that ever came out, Heavenly Sword. I just beat that game, like, two days ago. I'm doing a Let's Play for that. Um, game was so, it was so early in the PS3, um, lifespan that that joke was like, it took me, like, five hours to beat. Like, when I beat it, I haven't even uploaded the first episode because the game was so short. Like, I was playing through and I was like, oh, I'll still be playing it by the time I finish, uh, some of my other Let's Plays and uploading because I do weekly. I was like, all right. I might be like halfway through this game and then I'll start uploading the first episode. And then the other day I was like, oh, I'm at the end of the game. I didn't realize it was going to be this short. It was like, six, it took me like six hours, including like all my deaths and stuff. It took me like a total of like maybe six to seven hours to actually beat that game. No, I don't think it was even seven, like around six hours. So it was just really funny. I was like, oh, I, I beat the whole thing and I didn't even like get through the process of uploading it. So that was one of the games that always slipped through my fingers. Another game, um, it's called Wet. I don't know how many people even remember that one, but I remember playing the demo and thinking this game is super cool and over the top and it's got um, sort of that grindhouse feel gameplay and you do a bunch of acrobatic slow motion stuff. And I just remember being like, this demo is super sweet. I want this game. And I never owned the game and I was like, I'm going to do it. And I bought the game on eBay and I'm finally getting into that because I just beat Heavenly Sword. So I'm going to start doing my let's play for uh, Wet as well. And it's like, I feel a kind of like this, that's like a definitive list of games that I've, that have always slipped through my fingers and I'm finally starting to do them. And at some point, you know, like, and those were for the channel, so that's really why I got to those games. Um, so like for Metal Gear with me, I know I'm not going to be doing like a Let's Play for Metal Gear. I have to pick and choose in my free time what games I'm going to play. So with the PS3 over here, I have, I do have to go get my HD collection. And I think I'll finally start doing that because it really is my second favorite franchise and I, it's weird, but I actually feel bad for not having played through 5 already. Um, just because it's it's supposed to be my second favorite franchise, and I just have not taken the time out to play through it. But that's life. Like, if I didn't work, I would have played through all my games by now. Like, it would have been, like, all my free time, outside of spending time with my girlfriend, my other free time would have been like, alright, yeah, I'm going to play through all the games that I that have always slipped through my fingers. All the Legend of Zelda stuff, um, all, you know, the last two and a half, however you want to count, 2.2 uh, Metal Gear games, however you want to decide to count Ground Zeroes. But yeah, those are some of the games that have always kind of slipped through my fingers, some of the horror games that were just always right there, never really played them. I should, I wish I remembered that, because I would have asked my uncle when he was giving me like all these Dreamcast games and Nintendo games, I would have been like, where are your PlayStation games? Because he was the reason I played Metal Gear and Silent Hill and all those other games. And I never thought to ask him, like, do you still have those CDs? Because he had, like, the, you know, the whole stack. So I was like, crap, I, I always wish, like, I, I was thinking about that earlier today. I was like, I wish I asked him about that because that would have been how I played Silent Hill if he'd given me that game. Uh, it's kind of the same with Dino Crisis. I hadn't played that in years. And when he gave me his Dreamcast, I was like, I'm not about to play Dino Crisis again because I don't have to know where my PlayStation Dino Crisis CD is. So I'm going to play the Dreamcast version. Still didn't beat it. But I did play it through quite a few hours. Um, that's one of those weird things where I was like, for a while, I was like definitively like, I'm going to re you know, replay Dino Crisis and go through this game again and deal with these freaking terrifying velociraptors, much scarier than slow-moving zombies. 
like Dino Crisis like actually gets me going because I freak out in that game. Like zombies don't run. Uh, they do now in Resident Evil, but no, those raptors were too fast for me. I was like, this actually freaks me out. Resident Evil was like, oh, they're over there. I can do my little, you know, run around technique. I was like, you can't do that with a Velociraptor. That junk gets serious and it, it just freaks me out. Like they hiss at you a little and then that's when they start going. I'm just like, you know what? Freaky. Too freaky. But those are some of the games that have slipped through the cracks um, over the years. Um, as far as newer stuff, I just don't have the money. So I'm just like, I'm just going through my back, you know, my backed up catalog of games. Like all my Steam games that I have, there are too many to mention. I've got some Soul Reaver games I can't wait to play through. Um, Soul Reaver again. Technically never beat it. I still have my CD for the first Soul Reaver. I never actually beat that game on PlayStation. So Soul Reaver, Soul Reaver 2 I never got to beat, even though I know the ending because um, my cousins had it and it was just like, okay. Uh, Defiance. That was a weird thing where I kind of skipped over my whole, I have to know the story here. I just love Legacy of Kane. Defiance is freaking amazing. And I skipped right over to, I was like, I know the ending to 2, it's fine. And I went straight to Defiance just instantly playing it. So, got a lot of games on Steam that are slipping through the cracks that, you know, over time I'm, I'm going through little by little. Um, I might actually start Skyrim soon, depending on what people vote on. You guys can vote on my Twitter poll. I have one up for a Let's Play. It's either Skyrim with mods or Fallout New Vegas with mods since... I kind of want to start over Fallout New Vegas now that I, I'm putting mods on it. I decided to restart because I haven't played that in like a year and a half. And I was like, I loaded it up. I was like, oh, I didn't know my save files were even still on my laptop. I was like, I have to start over. And then I was like, no, I don't. And I loaded it. And I was like, I don't know where I'm at. I was on a destroyed bridge in the sunlight. And I was like, hmm, I should restart this game because I don't know what's happening at all right now. And I was like, I'm going to restart the game. So... One of those will be up on the channel soon as well as far as Let's Play. So definitely vote on that if you're interested. Um, but yeah, we'd love to know what games have always slipped through the cracks for you guys. Whether it's one game from a franchise, a couple games like me with Metal Gear, or just an entire franchise, all of Silent Hill, all of Legend of Zelda, um, all the Fatal Frame games. It's all the stuff that I'm, I know I love. And I just don't do it. Uh, we'd love to know what games have kind of slipped through the cracks for you guys. So please put your comments down in the comment section below. And of course, thanks for watching.